Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Emma. I don't even know where to start. I have so much to tell you, so many reading updates to tell you. That is better. I love this lamp. I told myself I would vlog today because I have my first final exam tomorrow night. It's at 7 p.m. It's three hours long. Uh, I feel like I'm always cursed with the 7 to 10 p.m. exams. Like at 10 p.m. I don't want to be big brain you know i don't want to be a big brain at 10 p.m i want to be getting ready for bed which is always unfortunate and anyway i would much prefer an 8 a.m exam to 7 p.m plus it gives you the whole day to be anxious which is part of the reason why i'm vlogging today because i honestly thought maybe i was over it but turns out i'm not i've just been getting progressively more anxious and more anxious throughout the days leading up to the exam even though i know i'm absolutely gonna do very well on the exam honestly but it's this like absurd pressure that i put on myself vlogging is something that usually calms me down like it's a nice thing to do and as well i just have so many things to tell you regardless so so this exam is split between like short answer questions and then we have to write two essays thankfully we were given the essay questions so i just drafted out two essays and i'm just trying to not really memorize them but just have a good idea of what i want to say which i think is sometimes better and develops better onto the actual final exam paper than if you were to like memorize it word for word and just put it out there so anyway i'll maybe talk about that later but the exciting news for those of you who keep asking about my frankenstein paper and maybe to read it or something in a video i did get it back well no i didn't actually get the paper back i got an email yesterday from my professor from the class that i submitted it in and i'll just i'll just put it here So the paper got 95% and he said it was maybe the best essay he's ever read on Frankenstein. Which just feels really good because I put so much work into that. Um, and that's just, it, it's just, I started crying. It was just incredible. So I'm actually currently looking into trying to get it published in a journal or something like that. And then I will definitely, once I have it back, because I'll get it back tomorrow um think about like reading it or reading parts of it in a vlog or something because i've been getting a lot of questions so that is the update on that thank you guys so much for asking it went really well yeah i'm still like kind of in shock about it oh. come on in it's wonderful to see you senior hachi how are the wife and kids good all right so what are we thinking today sweetie Okay, I'm just gonna pop the hat off now, okay? <gasps> oh, oh, Hachi. Okay, so I'm seeing a ton of dandruff. It looks like there might also be a hole in your head, but you haven't come to the right place for that one. Okay, so luckily it seems like your hair texture is the same as mine. What has made my hair so glorious? What has made it the beauty you see in front of you today? It's function of beauty. So we're gonna hook you up. There's no need to worry, okay? You are gonna be back to growing your long, luxurious mane in no time, buddy, okay? I've been using them for a year now and look at my hair. It's okay because all you do is go onto their website, okay? And you take a quiz and that quiz is gonna outline everything about your hair. So is your hair wavy? Is it curly? Is it straight? It's also gonna be outlining your hair goals, okay? In my case, I have been trying to grow up my hair and as you can see, I mean, look at how long my bangs are getting now. And I also wanted to just 
rejuvenate and repair and just make my hair as soft as possible so those were the goals that i chose now you can also choose the fragrance okay and i will just reassure you okay that they are 100 percent vegan and cruelty free there are no sulfates no parabens and they are all 100 percent dermatologist tested fish are friends not food my thought exactly they do deliver right to your door as well 42 wallaby way sydney they've got it and just for you we'll give you a special deal okay you can get 20 percent off your first 16 ounce custom set when you use my link and subscribe i would also recommend becoming a member to get exclusive benefits like free shipping i am going to be using this on you today i do have the peach and mango but i do also have eucalyptus and lavender which one would you prefer the peach okay that kind of leads me into my next exciting thing um first of all i don't really know what my concrete plans are for next year i definitely want to finish my degree um first things first i did sign up for a summer course this semester the summer semester which runs from may to the end of july and the course i signed up for is american literature which i'm going to be honest with you i'm not excited for american literature is not something I don't know. I'm just not really interested in it, but it does fulfill a requirement to graduate. So that is one that I signed up for. And then for those of you who are asking, I will have like one year left. I will be going into fourth year in September. And then if I do full time as a full time student in fourth year, that'll be it. I'll be done my undergrad degree. Um, but I'm not 100% sure yet what my plans are for September, like where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be taking. Oh, there is a little finch. This little finch on my balcony. About the bird thing, the geese, the cobra snakes, I realize I have confused some people on <laughs> Instagram. I'm so sorry. Cobra chickens are not an actual bird. <laughs> it's just what we call Canadian geese because they are evil. <laughs> this happens every year when they mate and have um, baby geese goslings, little Ryan goslings, but they have become a menace, a menace to society. Um, this happens every year. Campus is one of their like breeding grounds essentially. And so it is kind of a rite of passage to be chased and hunted down by a cobra chicken on your way to your final. It has happened to me, I think once or twice, um, but they keep waking me up at ungodly times in the morning. They squawk, they perch on people's roofs like they think they're batman they think they're about to deliver vengeance it's very scary okay let's talk about the reading updates because i you guys you guys have been waiting for this one so i finally finished our darling the kingdom of little wounds um if you have not seen me talk about this i suggest probably going to watch this vlog first this wow I gave this one star and I do just want to preface it with a little warning. If you are sitting down right now to have your tea, to have your toast, um, which I know some of you were doing last time, I am so sorry. I advise you to maybe either put your digestion on hold or put this video on pause um, because the nastiness that I was talking about in the first vlog, like it just gets even worse if that is somehow possible. So. Um, if you want to go have your breakfast, maybe watch someone else's video for a little bit because you're going to be having your breakfast again if you know what I'm talking about. So a lot of this book is trying to determine who has syphilis. Is syphilis a thing? Who is having it? Who has it? Where does it come from? Where is syphilis? So the first thing that happens is that our king of this mythical um, city, whatever, King Christian, he has, I don't know if he has syphilis or not. We're just gonna assume literally every single person in this book has syphilis, I think for the sake of things. Um, but King Christian has been falling in love with one of his council members, um, whose name is Sir Nicholas, and he has essentially promoted him just to be closer to him. Like the two, I don't know if Nicholas really feels the way. I think Nicholas is just using the king, but the king is like in love with Sir Nicholas. As we've seen, Christian has been in the bathroom his whole life, 24 seven. So finally, Christian and Nicholas um, get together, they get together, they get to go to bed together, and immediately after, <laughs> he poos himself to death in a very graphic scene, like he literally, um, the word jellied will not leave me alone. The word jellied and jelly and jellies is like haunting me throughout this novel. We've had jellied entrails, jellied boobs, and now we have, um, 
it's just so strange because you have the queen talking to someone and then all of it, all of a sudden it says she thinks of jellied calves feet next part is one of the most disgusting things in the whole novel i just love talking to you guys about this because like i need i need closure i need help i need therapy after reading this book so the whole thing about syphilis is that they're trying to determine if um the queen queen isabella of the kingdom does she have syphilis and if so her children clearly have syphilis because i think if you're born you're also born with syphilis if you're mother has it or something like i'm not sure i'm not a doctor and neither neither are these people because what happens their experiment i'm not i'm gonna describe it as casually and carefully as i can because th this it made me nauseous this is one of the only books to ever make me nauseous but essentially their experiment is going to be that one of the doctors of the kingdom and of the king the personal doctors he is going to he's going to like cut open one of the children's like what is it called like pustule why would someone volunteer to get syphilis i don't know let me okay how do i say this he contaminates the organ that you would probably most associate with syphilis by um damaging it and then putting the paintbrush in it if i had to read it you are now stuck with that image as well this page is also disgusting so disgusting the queen is kind of going insane maybe from syphilis which induces a raving apparently and hallucinations maybe not but remember how i was talking last time about like the finger of princess sophia her daughter and how parts and pieces of her body were just coming back um the queen has started to make her own little arts and crafts project from her own children's remains and out of her dead children's remains what does it say made of bones and fingernails she makes a tiny baby i just i don't understand i keep i kept saying this all of last vlog but like i don't understand why this book is like this like you have people standing at a feast and literally like just a feast just a normal feast where people are enjoying themselves they're eating and stuff like that and all of a sudden it says the duchess next to her smells dreadfully of urine why why does she Wh why just why does why like what is this what is this i can't even read it i can't even read it i'm honestly a little unsure what the mother cake is that they're referring to in these um birth scenes i don't think i want to know it's just, we have the smell of baking blood in the queen's room. Nice, sultry. And then finally, the moment we've all been waiting for when I was telling you guys last week about um, the man's jewels, which were bejeweled in that he had sewn a whole bunch of like precious jewels and stuff into his jewels to um ward off the plague or ward off syphilis i guess in this case but now revenge has come on this man and one of our main characters who we're following takes a knife stretches his to its fullest length um and with two hard strokes she cuts it off she stuffs that part of the count into her bosom and wipes her hands upon the sheet the book ends with the two girls now in possession of his um member filled with jewels and eventually they pop out the jewels and then it's so ridiculous they throw his thing into like the air and then eventually it lands on the ground and one of like the palace's cats comes along and eats it and then she says at the end back to the syphilitic fairy tale does Isabel really have the disease and is she responsible for passing it on to her children? I'm not quite sure myself. Oh, a longtime friend and editor. See, you don't, like, don't get your friend. Don't get your friend. Do not get your friend who's also a fan of syphilis to be your editor. Wow. 
Anyway, that is that. I know a lot of you guys are running out to get your hands on it because it's just so strange. I gave this one star, but it's the kind of one star book that I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. I'm finally gonna put this back on the shelf, so don't worry, no more of this. You will not have to withstand any more of that on my channel. Um, I'm currently reading three books, um, which I'm excited to tell you about because, okay, well, I'm mostly excited to tell you about tell you about one of them. First is Family Happiness. I'm still reading this. There's no page numbers, so I think I'm almost halfway through the book. Um, not a lot to say. I did like this quote, okay? I'm gonna say some positive things about Tolstoy. Whenever I looked ahead, it seemed to me that we could go no farther in the same direction, that the world of the possible ended there, and that the whole scene must remain fixed forever in its beauty. But we still moved on, and the magic wall kept parting to let us in, and still we found the familiar garden with trees and paths and withered leaves. But at each step, the magic wall closed up again behind us and in front, and I ceased to believe in the possibility of advancing farther. I ceased to believe in the reality of it all. So that was nice, but I don't care <laughs> about the plot. Um, this, okay, guys, it has happened. It is happening. It has happened. I posted a poll on my Instagram asking you to vote about what book I should pick up next because I was really conflicted between which one I wanted to pick up, whether Season of Migration to the North or Pedro Paramo. And it was so close. The votes were so close for so long, but finally Season of Migration to the North won, which actually surprised me because I totally thought Pedro Paramo was gonna win. Um, but holy, holy, this is a book. This is a book right here. After, especially after reading Kingdom of the Wounds, but just, 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 this book is fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm still gonna read Pedro probably after this, but Season of Migration to the North, five it's gonna be five stars i sat down the other night and i started it and once i started it like i couldn't stop until like i had to go to bed i started it pretty late in the evening but like in one sitting i got through 82 pages and i just did not want to stop could not stop and i haven't been able to pick it up in a couple days because i've just been in the exam space and i don't really want any other ideas of good literature um crowding in there right now but this is incredible like i've already annotated so much but we have a man who's living in his village in Sudan and he comes back after spending seven years abroad in Europe um, and he comes back and he doesn't recognize someone in his village. He hasn't seen him. It's this man named Mustafa and eventually he starts to learn about Mustafa's story because Mustafa also spent time in the UK and in Europe. Okay, first of all, it was the writing that pulled me in because I wasn't really sure about the story other than what that synopsis said. Um, but just the writing, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start annotating this because I want to have these quotes for forever. It was not long before I felt as though a piece of ice were melting inside me, as though I were some frozen substance on which the sun had shone. Or describing his mother's face, um, when I think back, I see her clearly with something on her face like a mask. I don't know, a thick mask, as though her face were the surface of the sea. Do you understand? It possessed not a single color, but a multitude, appearing and disappearing and intermingling. <gasps> but then we start to have Mustafa's narrative. And what essentially happens without spoiling anything, this book is about, well, so far it's been about um, women who are either committing suicide or, um, or getting murdered. It's very disturbing, but it's just like, I can't even say anything about it because I don't want to ruin it for anyone who picks it up, but it's just so good so violent so scary and the writing like i just had to stop and look up and be like oh my gosh like this is how you write a book like it's just so fantastic mustafa's narrative is so disturbing but so just like well put together my sole weapon being that sharp knife inside my skull i knew this green infinite giant as though it were roving back and forth within my ribs talking about the sea the whole of the journey i savored that feeling of being nowhere alone before and behind me, either eternity or nothingness. I feel like this, this could have been like the first line of the book because it's just perfect. Um, everything which happened before my meeting her was a premonition. Everything I did after I killed her was an apology, not for killing her, but for the lie that was my life. Like just, guys, I can't even, I feel like I can't even talk about this book properly because I'm just so, enthralled with it. My bedroom was a graveyard that looked onto a garden. My bedroom was like an operating theater in a hospital. My bedroom became a theater of war, my bed a patch of hell. I'm not gonna say too much more 
but Mustafa's narrative is very much about his time spent in, I think, London. Um, yeah, after the First World War, shortly after that, and how he's just abused, used what he does. He's grown up and given very much a Western education. I cannot wait until tomorrow night is over and I can just, just finish this. Honestly, I'm just gonna finish it in one sitting because like I need, physically need to keep reading that book. I'm so glad I finally picked it up because I've had that book for almost a year now. It's been on my shelves and it's appeared in so many videos where I say, I wanna read it, I wanna read it, and then something happens and I don't get to it. But thank you guys so much for voting on it. Um, I'm still listening as well to Molly of the Mall. To be honest with you, I'm not sure if I hate this or love this. And I'm gonna reserve my judgment on that for a little bit. Um, this is about a girl who works in Edmonton Mall, which is I think the largest mall in North America. Maybe it still is. Um, it's very Canadian, but also very like Jane Austen. Um, she is obsessed with Jane Austen. She's like a literature student. It very much captures, um, I think she's graduated actually. Um, like that feeling after graduation, it captures so well, I think just having to work in either retail or like food services, the monotony of it, the pain of it, the horror of it, um, and just like she, Molly's really suffering. She works at a shoe store in Edmonton Mall. And it's also about how eventually sometimes you just become complacent in where you are in life because you're comfortable. You've got into a routine and 30 years later you wake up and you say, oh my God, what am I doing? I haven't done anything. I've been doing the same thing every single day. And it's kind of that feeling that she's going through right now. But the writing um, is very much like, what does it remind me of? It kind of reminds me of like a juvenile, very like comedic, um, kind of spoofy Jane Austen, if that makes any sense. She says, you know, a lot like dear reader and all of this stuff as if she's writing like um, a very, very quirky. And I'm not necessarily sure if it's in a good way or not yet, but I'm definitely gonna keep listening to this. So that is the other one, but. Okay, hi guys. It is the next day and I only have a couple more hours until I have to leave for my exam, but um, I actually <laughs> read and uh, finished a book last night just because I have been literally, uh, I don't know, just so anxious and I've been pretty much all today just anxiety cleaning my apartment, which is something I highly recommend. Um, it's very relaxing. I decided to pick this up last night because I just wanted something not necessarily mind mindless because this is actually quite deep. <laughs> this is Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien too. One of my best friends gave this to me for my birthday uh, last summer and <laughs> she said for my favorite alien event. This was honestly perfect. I was not, I was kind of on the verge of a panic attack, I feel like, and I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna sit down and pick up something that I can just like look at, read very slowly, and I ended up reading the whole thing. Um, and it's essentially about this alien, Jomni, who comes to Earth, and his goal is to study humans, but he doesn't actually meet any humans. Um, he meets plants and animals instead, and it's really wholesome, but also really relevant. I think one of my favorite characters was the egg. What if I never hatch, or what if I do hatch, and it's the best moment of my life, but then I never get to hatch again? What if I want to hatch, but also never hatch? Um, I just really like the anxiety egg, really identified with him, so this was great. I gave it four stars, and it was honestly exactly what I needed last night, so, so, so glad that I ended up reading this, but right now, I think what I'm gonna do is just eat um, a small dinner, and then just, like, go over my notes at least just one more time. I think, like, there is one too many times you can revise something, so I'm just gonna stop after the next one, and then I'm gonna head out the door to write my exam. Um, and then hopefully I'll be back uh, maybe before 10 p.m. So yeah, but I finished a book last night. It's the next day 
and i'm home for my exam it is very late i've pretty much taken today oh that was my wrist taken today off just to relax i slept in a ton i got home last night and i was just swamped um i didn't take the full three hours i think i took two almost two and a half and then i was just like you know what i'm done i think it went really well so you had to write two essays and then three long responses to quotes and then what you know their larger significances to the work so for the two essays i got to write one on the act of witnessing and like its ethical implications and then i chose who did i choose for that one um i chose elliot's proof rock and then i also chose endgame and solar bones to talk about witnessing and then the second essay were about the ideas of the archive and the crypt which are two really cool um, concepts and ideas and then for that one I chose Frankenstein because you can kind of look at the creature, Victor's creature, as a walking archive and crypts and then I also chose uh, to write about Seamus Heaney for that one too because a lot of his work is concerned with like material history and archaeology so I wrote on punishment in that one which is a really great poem um, and then finally I did Keats. I've never written about Keats anywhere um, which is it was a little daunting because I've actually never written about the romantics or I've never had the chance to write about the romantics anywhere but I did his ode on a Grecian urn about the archive because the urn is basically an archive as well so that went really well and then for the short answer the only other new person like that I got to write about was Alice Oswald and her memorial so yeah overall it was a really fun night <laughs> is that strange to say I don't know I had a blast just kind of sitting there although my neck and my hand are absolutely distraught the exam was in the social science building and the chairs in those classrooms were just the classroom our exam was in are like old old wooden hard school chairs and they are awful and like anyway so but that's over and now i have nine days until my next exam to prepare so that's great so i took today off um on my reading i'm so excited to update you this book is actually funny <laughs> this book is actually getting so funny this is molly of the mall i've made it through a little bit more um but it's just so funny as as a canadian for example she has a little chart or a little table that she creates because molly wants to write like the next great canadian novel um and i was wrong she hasn't graduated she was just on summer break working at the mall but now she's back to her third year of english literature much like myself um, but she considers writing like a gothic novel and then she would choose to set it in saskatchewan because it's the most gothic of the canadian prairie provinces and then she has like this whole chart comparing attributes of the gothic to what they would correspond to in saskatchewan which is just really funny like the dastardly villains translates to corrupt private grain trade system representatives or instead of the mad woman in the attic trope you have the rabid badger in the woodshed trope <laughs> molly is totally obsessed with jane austen and what i will say about the humor is that it catches you off guard i don't like the audiobook narrator that much to be honest i don't think she's really doing um the sarcastic irony voice of molly that well but sometimes sometimes she'll just say something and i literally just like laughed out loud while i was listening to it she wants to find love she's like trying to find someone to date but of course she's like way too inspired by jane austen and has these huge um standards and she sees someone in her her class and she's like is he gonna be mr darcy to my elizabeth bennett <sighs> but then i worry what if he likes classic rock or is a member of the young progressive conservatives for example she writes um like a paper on pride and prejudice and she only gets a b plus and then that same guy gets like an a but he didn't even read pride and prejudice he says that he only read the cole's notes version and i did a whole paper about how austin's white anglo upper middle class heteronormative perspective offered a limited view of marriage and courtship and she loved it um it's yeah it's just really funny because i feel like that happens all the time where people just don't read um the books and like that's the thing you don't really well you i, I don't want to say you don't need to read books like obviously it's totally possible to write a really good piece of writing or a really good essay just with ideas alone when she's considering like someone on the bus what's that on your walkman kind sir because this is set in like 1995 journey i don't think so sir yes you in the sweater vest what are you reading ken follett yikes i'm liking this a lot more now actually more because now we moved to the university of alberta um and we're out of edmonton mall which is great because i was not really enjoying the mall sections in the shoe store um i was just getting kind of bored and i was getting too many flashbacks to working in retail oh my gosh if any of you they were they were like there's a little debate in here as well about which is worse like 
retail or food service. I don't know if I was already saying this, but if you've worked in both or if you've just, you know, worked in one or the other, which one do you think is worse? I have worked in both and I will say they both have pros and cons. I would say overall food service is the 10th circle of hell. Um, the people are demons to you. They treat you like, oh my gosh. I have stories. I should do, I should do some other book recommendation video like I did with my worst dates about working in like retail or food service <laughs> and just stupid stuff that has happened there. Um, but then retail, on the other hand, I just find is a little bit more soul crushing because it is just so monotonous and so boring. Whereas at least in food service, if I was a hostess at a restaurant, you were like constantly run off your feet. You have no time to even think about what you're doing. So yeah but i would say food service overall anyway so i'm really liking this i'm currently 114 pages through but i've been listening to this on audio and then my other goal is actually to finish a book today which i'm so excited about i was reading a little bit of this this afternoon and i only have 60 pages left it's also like very large text which is nice so it's really easy to get through still oh five stars this might be my favorite book of the year so far if i'm thinking about it what else have i read that's been really great this this has been really great i think this might be my favorite of the year so far um highly recommend please read this oh my gosh i'm on page 110 and yeah i've just been having the time of my life with this so i think i'm gonna make a cup of tea um i ordered a little bit of uber eats and by a little bit i mean i did get two vegan burgers just for myself from a and w and i already ate one of them and the other one's turn will be coming frequent frequently i <laughs> wish will be coming soon um but i think i'm gonna have some tea and the rest of my onion rings i don't think that's a great combo so maybe i'll space it out but i probably might just try and sit down and finish this right now or at least get a little bit more i am trying as well to organize a video to film tomorrow i wanted to do it today but the sun has just been pretty much just hidden by the clouds. It's been raining a lot and it's already almost five o'clock now and I like to film more in the morning, especially when there's better lighting in the apartment. So I think I might do that tomorrow and then that means I'll have to film and edit it tomorrow and then it'll be Sunday's video, which you will see before this one. So yes, that is what I am doing. I'll just, I guess, get it set up and ready for tomorrow. And then tonight, I think I maybe wanna go to the gym. Um, I have really exciting plans for may um but i'm not gonna say anything right now but i'm so excited and yeah i want to go to the gym and do some incline high incline treadmill if that's a hint Okay, so I've got a nice little heat bag around me because I'm cold and my neck is still upset about the three hours of bending like a little muskrat over my exam. And now it's storming, raining, and very windy, so you can probably hear it rattling the windows. But um, I did manage to finish this. Holy moly. Like I said, five stars. This was just fantastic. Um, it was just a book like, yeah, oh, I just kept getting better and better and it was just so wonderfully crafted and put together so intense so violent so important just like one of the best things i've ever read um it was so compelling oh my gosh the two men we're following we have an unnamed narrator and mustafa who i was telling you about they're both kind of foils of the other they're parallels of each other's lives because they've both been educated in england and then returned to sudan and then they're kind of seeing how their lives are going. Mustafa famously repeats that his whole life is a lie and our narrator is like trying to figure out more about his life um, in the midst of things that are happening. We have like Mustafa's wife and his children in Sudan and I'm not gonna like say too much else about it, but it was fantastic. It was so good. So that is that. I just finished this and now I do not know what I want to pick up next. I think I wanna pick up Fortuna Sworn, um, that's like a 700 page 
monster but i've been waiting to read it for so long although there are a couple of other books that i really want to read so we'll see i might pick up a few i also really really wanted to start this and i think i might as you can see i already have a bookmark in it because i'm just like ready to read it now i think now that exams are over and i feel like my bookshelf just made a really unsettling noise <laughs> it's way too packed honestly and the shelves are bowing but um now that i'm kind of a better space now and i'm not too stressed out about exam stuff anymore so yeah maybe we'll read that slowly day by day i keep saying this it's just like you know when you have anxiety about reading about anxiety and stuff but um yeah that's the plan i'm actually sitting down now with a hot glue gun to do some of the arts and crafts stuff i was telling you about so i guess i'll show you that in a second but um yeah can i please tell you to read this like seriously so amazing um so so amazing and i'm pretty sure this was either a migrate a migration oh gosh <laughs> Um, a recommendation from one of you guys or I found it just like researching African lit I don't remember but if this was you thank you so much so I'm going to put this back up here now and then I guess I'm going to write down Sudan on my list of countries around the world so that was fantastic fantastic I would love to read more Sudanese literature so if you have any recommendations please oh my gosh please um, and I'm not even sure if that author has any more books out I guess I will definitely be looking that up, but that is that. Um, yeah, so I think now it is hot chocolate time and craft time. I'm almost out of my mint hot chocolate, hot chocolate, mint chocolate, hot chocolate. Um, but the brand that it's from, oh, what's it called? Totally forget what the brand is called, but I saw that they have a maple one, a maple hot chocolate, and they're all vegan. So I might just order the maple um, can of it as well, but yeah. Okay, so I saw this on a reel, but essentially I'm gonna make like a hanging moss little rock thing. Um, so I took this from my parents. They had like two of these, or it's just one round container that they're using to like put gifts in for people. But um, I took it and then I have a hot glue gun and then I did buy some moss. And then I'm essentially gonna create like a little wall hanging moss thing so we'll see how this goes i'm gonna facetime my friends while i do it um and yeah it should be fun i've been looking forward to making this for so long so i hope it turns out good Okay, so I've just been laying here a little bit this afternoon. I just got done filming a video and I've been listening to Molly of the Mall. And it is so funny. It's becoming even more funny now because Molly, we're kind of realizing that she's not that good at being an English literature student, but it also really hits on like the, sometimes like the mix of pretentiousness that can sometimes invade English classes, especially from students who just like, put up their hand and what comes out of their mouth is just like absolute jumbled nonsense that no one can even interpret the very like seemingly complex like class titles that some professors give their classes or like it's just so funny because she's sitting in class and she has no idea um what what people are saying first of all instead of her paper that she's supposed to be writing on pride and prejudice instead of an essay she hands in a mixtape and she passes which just just would not fly but like one of their classes is hermeneutics black bile and hegemony or something like that um <laughs> they all just wear black turtlenecks for their presentation on black bile and their professor applauds their attempts who kapoor realize yes kapoor realized their humor because it's smartly yet irreverently self-referential i feel like you definitely do sometimes have that experience doing an English lecture where you're like, someone is so far up their own, whether that's like the professor or just another student who's trying to sound so smart, but they're not actually saying 
anything of meaning. So like he snaps on her with a question and she says, I can see both sides of this issue and I feel really conflicted once I consider the ambiguities inherent in this question. So it's not that I don't have an answer, it's just that if postmodernism has taught us anything, it's that we can never definitively say yes or no. Rather, the best we can do is offer a highly qualified maybe or perhaps. I can't believe I've done this. I was just reorganizing my shelves going through and like unhauling a couple books, which maybe I'll show you in a second, but I literally got to this, which I didn't even see because it was so tiny. This is a collection of Tolstoy stories, which has the Cossacks, Happy Ever After, and the Death of Ivan Ilyich. And you guys know that I just ordered um, this gross edition of Family Happiness by Tolstoy for Dickens versus Tolstoy because Family Happiness is one of our reads this year. Little did I know that Happy Ever After is the same story as Family Happiness. Why? why they changed the title so drastically i don't know but here it is it's literally the same story in honestly a much nicer edition that has actual page numbers and i know who translated this this is rosemary edmonds um so i think what i'm gonna do is actually switch over from reading in this disgusting thing this thing has typos galore the print is tiny it doesn't have page numbers um and i'm really regretting that i bought this but i seriously thought that i did not own family happiness because this just said happy ever after <laughs> Oh, I'm so upset. So I think what I'm going to do is transfer over my notes and like my highlights into this edition and then just keep reading it in here. So as of right now, I'm 64 pages through. I can actually tell you that now. And I think there's a little less than 100 pages in Family Happiness or Happy Ever After. I'm not sure what to call it now. But um, yeah, I may actually try to finish this today. Okay, so I did manage to actually get rid of a few books which will be donated or used in like one of my book box video so the first one is obviously this copy of family happiness i still feel like such the fool oh my gosh um yikes this one this should just honestly be recycled because these editions that amazon puts out are just ridiculous um and so silly and like oh god anyway so that one and then the next one i pulled was the fault of the house of usher and other stories by edgar Allan poe because i do have another edition of his short stories there are some in this copy uh for example what the balloon hoax or ms found in a bottle i have read those and this edition is also very tiny i don't love the signet classics edition so um i'm gonna keep my other copy of his short stories and then if i want to read these ones i'll probably get like a nice Edgar Allan Poe edition. Um, next up, we have Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer. Uh, this is the book I've most recently read from this pile. <sighs> I'm gonna just throw it on a shelf in my closet to save it for my worst books of the year video in like December, January of next year, um, but I just don't want to look at it. I don't want it on my shelf. I hated this. And then the next one I have is Girl in Translation by Jean Kwok. I read this a year ago. I listened to the audiobook of this and I did like it, but it's something I'm never going to read again. Um, and I just want to pass it along to someone else. So that is that one. And then finally, this is the only one on here I haven't read. And that is An Arc of the Dante Chamber by Matthew Pearl, which is the sequel to The Dante Club. This is actually the only cop, or this is the only arc I have. Um, I got this when I used to work at my university's bookstore. They had a shelf in the break room where like, if you worked there, you could just take books and leave books, which was fun. And I saw this. I do have the um, Dante Club on my shelf, which I found thrifted, but I've heard really bad things about the series. And it is kind of like a, not really dark academia, but it's this one at least is set in the 1870s where there's like a serial killer who is killing based on Dante's Inferno in the first one. And I think Purgatory in this one. Um, and we follow like, um, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, Christina Rossetti, Browning, Tennyson, and I'm just really over it. Like, I'm just over people writing weird historical murder mystery crimes concerning poets. I'm, I'm over that. So um, this one is going to go, although I'm kind of sad that it's, it was my only arc, um, but I honestly don't really care. So that is that. All right, hello. So I'm back with another reading update. I finished another uh, book, like short story. It's now, it's very late. I'm laying in bed, but I still have some work to do. But I did just manage to finish Happy Ever After. Family Happiness? I think Family Happiness makes more sense as a title, honestly, now that I finished this book. I'm so sad I wasn't reading it from this edition before because it smells 
oh my gosh it smells so good this is one of like the old penguin additions and it smells heavenly um what do i want to say i uh, here's the thing tolstoy oh my god i just want tolstoy to stop freaking talking for one goddamn second <laughs> i just want this man to shut his mouth and more importantly keep his mouth out of the mouth of his characters family happiness or happy ever after i think and i generally think tolstoy is fantastic he's a fantastic writer in that he can write characters he can write people i really feel like i knew these two people even though i only had them for 90 pages i have a full picture of their life of who they are and i know them and i think he really does go in depth into their lives but he goes in depth into their lives and what he freaking wants to say and it's so frustrating because this whole story is about the marriage between a girl of 17 at the time and a guy of 30 something and as they're growing up sergey very much wants to stay in the countryside he thinks society is just evil it's awful he doesn't want his wife really to go there but he's like oh you're young and and stupid <laughs> he doesn't say that but i know he's thinking it um and you you know you're you're gonna want to go be frivolous and i can't stop you you have to figure it out for yourself the whole story is just so disappointing and our our narrator is the voice of the young wife herself and it's just so disappointing at every turn at every stage to see the words coming out of her mouth like from the start i was reading you guys a few passages from my last vlog about how when they were first like courting basically all of her life just revolved around him she got rid of anything that he didn't like like any interests any thoughts any opinions and her whole life was literally she said just like thinking his thoughts and then when they marry things kind of start to change because she gets quite depressed in the country like there's not a lot going on and he's like well you know what let's go to petersburg and we'll see what's popping in petersburg they get there and everyone's like obsessed with her because she's beautiful and funny and graceful and blah 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 like she's the perfect new society girl to have in society and her husband is just so upset by this and then from that point um their marriage kind of starts to fall apart he's like it's disgusting that the prince should think you pretty and that you therefore run after him forgetting your husband and yourself and your womanly dignity and refuse to understand what your husband must feel for you when in reality like she's just having a fun time she's literally just having a fun time going to parties going to balls and she literally says that like doing these things and like feeling beautiful from other people's glances or gazes or going out like just makes her more in love with her husband and makes her like happier because she's like a beautiful thing for her husband um which is uh, which should be discussed in and of itself but then he doesn't like get that at all he's just like oh you like someone else i was just so mad because they finally have it out literally after years they move back to the country and they're quite stone cold to each other or whatever and it just ends up being about like how their first love of each other isn't ever going to come back and about how love in relationships like eventually that honeymoon feeling goes away and now their love is just going to be like a steady happiness like family happiness for her essentially but like it's just so controlling and so disgusting like this whole book has just been her literally regurgitating tolstoy's garbage i'm sorry and she says why did you give me why did you give me a freedom which i didn't know how to use why did you give up teaching me if you had cared if you had managed me differently none of this would have happened she says why did you let me go into society if you thought it so evil that you ceased to love me because of it and he's like it was not society my dear and she's like why did you not use your authority why didn't you lock me up or kill me i would be better off than i am now deprived of all that made up my happiness i.e his love and then he's like no i couldn't have because all of us and especially you women must discover for ourselves all the futilities of life in order to come back to life itself just so angry because tolstoy is a great writer and he knows he's a great writer but then he writes drivel philosophy like this he thinks he's portraying these like really eloquent deep looks into people's lives and like they are that's what i'll say i think i've finally gotten to part of the meat why i hate a lot of what tolstoy writes because he's so good at creating full characters but then he somehow 
can't get his own stupid ideas out of their mouths. Because here, I'm sure he thinks he's done great. He's delved into the psyche of a woman. This is our first work from Tolstoy we've read where a woman is our narrator in the first person. Um, and he probably thinks he's got it. He's unlocked it. He's unlocked how marriage and relationship works. He's done it from the point of view of a woman. And for me, I think that's doubly frustrating because I felt throughout the whole book like I knew her even though I completely disagreed with her like I think she was like a real full person but then in the end to just see her like become so displaced from any actual agency and just to literally spew out like Tolstoy's ideas and conceptions and like his very much utopian views of things and like utopian in that they're not actually Oh god, I don't know, they're not actually true. Because in the end, she just accepts this newfound happiness as a mother um, and very much like the family happiness, the family love that she now embraces because she knows she can't get back like the honeymoon phase of her relationship. And she's like, well, I'm just gonna love my husband as the father of my children and that's all that's left for me. And it settles into like this very self-satisfied ending where Tolstoy thinks he's like wrapped it up in this neat little bow that is like a happy ending. I mean, it's freaking called Happy Ever After, but it's not, it's complete... <sighs> rubbish and nonsense. Like, I want to give it four stars because I think there were beautiful lines, I think the characters were really well crafted, and even though they were 100% just mouthpieces for Tolstoy's like marriage anatomy, marriage psychology class, like I think they were really great. For example, I thought we were going somewhere great because um, our narrator really kind of controversially even today I guess admits that two events happened that should have altered my life but they brought about no change in me and then she's like it was the birth of my first child and I was like oh damn that's kind of progressive and then she's like I can't it can't be helped I love my son but I can't sit day in and day out beside him it would be too tedious and I'm not going to pretend about it and I was like yes good for you but all this is just to show that she's being just so swept away and corrupted by society that she can't be a proper mother because she's too young and she has to get all of her little frivolities out has to get out being watched and has to get over being young so that she can settle down with her older more accomplished smarter calm serene countryside husband and who now at the end just becomes so condescending telling her i saw you go through all of this i couldn't stop it because you had to figure it out for yourself and you wouldn't even listen to me if i told you otherwise that's the thing that's the thing too with dickens versus tolstoy is that i feel like i can actually hack and actually take dickens just absurd fainting woman so much better than i can this like blatant proclamation of truth of women and marriage and society um like i think i can just take dickens I think I can take Dickens' misogyny and like sexism and just total misunderstanding because it's so stupid, it's so absurd, it's the same thing over and over again and it's not like an in-depth character analysis, it's simply just for comedic value where the woman has to faint or be some character trope, but this just really grates under my skin and gets me so much more angry. In the end, I don't know what I'm gonna rate it, I'm conflicted now. If you've read Family Happiness, I saw a few people saying on our last live show that you guys had just started it and it was displaying like a really unhealthy relationship um and i thought at that point like maybe it was just gonna be like that in the beginning and then we would kind of discuss that but no it was not the case i'm now going to move on to polykushka i'm not going to start it tonight i need a break from tolstoy i'm just oh god i don't know why he makes me so angry i really don't know why tolstoy makes me so angry i don't know i think it's because i can see through him sometimes and i'm like this is stupid i'm gonna go now and sort out the thumbnail and get tomorrow's video scheduled and yeah <laughs> um but i just wanted to come on here and update you on that so i also hung up one of my um creations from last night oh wait i didn't even show you god damn it i didn't even show you my finished products okay i'll do that Okay, I turned the big light on. So this is this one. This is the first one. I did just put these here like this is clip on mushroom, but I think I kind of like it. I'm not going to keep it here because it's too close to these shelves, but yeah, it just looks like a weird hanging moss thing, I think. I think I might change it to or add some more because you can still kind of see, but it's like very nice and textured. It's very soft. And then I did put the other one here for now. So he's hanging there. This one has like two smaller egg looking things. I just think it looks really cool and it gives like a nice... I don't know, natural vibe? Look at it. It just looks like broccoli on my wall and I'm really digging it, so that is that. I think I'm also going to end the vlog here because I've just been editing it and 
it's very long so i'm going to wish you well i'm currently in my house coat and pj so i'm just gonna say good night ciao i hope you're having um a good night a good day and i will see you very soon thank you so much for watching this long vlog if you made it all the way please leave me oh leave me a moon emoji leave me a little moon um yeah okay i will see you guys very soon in my next video ciao